Okay, great. Hi, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for attending. My name is Grant Kastner. I am Extempore's Community Manager. I work here doing a lot of our webinars and hosting things um, like this. And I am so, so proud and happy to present Dr. Claudia Fernandez from the University of Illinois, Chicago, who will be speaking to us uh, yet again, as she has done before at our previous uh, PD extravaganzas, this time on transitioning from grammar points to communicative goals, the power of tasks for meaningful and purposeful language use. And Claudia, if I may, I wanted to just give a, a slight bit of background on the okay. sort of inspiration behind this presentation, because I remember Claudia giving presentations in the past, in this past summer during PD. And I, I just recall that during the presentations, she would talk about using tasks, but still people would continue to ask questions. Well, how do I tie in this to my grammar, right? How do I still do this and, and teach the subjunctive at the same time? And so I really, I thought it would be valuable to really have her dive in and talk about, okay, what is this transition and just letting go of constantly worrying about grammar points? And so here we are, this is the result of it. Um, and without further ado, I'll give you Claudia. So Claudia, go ahead. Well, thank you so much. Exactly, that was the inspiration behind it. Uh, and, um, and well, I hope that I can make a point, right? That we can do that, right? That we are, we are that there is a, that there is a possibilities to think outside the box, that it, that it is possible and it, we can do it. We can, we can focus on communicative goals. The thing that happens is that we are so used to not doing it that, that we think that just that how can this be possible, right? So I hope that I, by what I'm gonna tell you today, at least you can consider, at least start to think, you know, that it might be possible to teach this way if you have not done that yet. So um, I want to start by showing you a little bit of a graph that I made, you know, last night when I was preparing, finishing preparing this webinar. And it's more or less to reflect what is the state of many courses of many, many textbooks for sure, right? And the state of many syllabi, what is that we, that in what framework we are immersed. So um, we have usually a theme, right? And right away, I don't know what comes first to tell you the truth, if the theme of our lessons or if it's vocabulary and grammar. But something is for sure that the vocabulary and the grammar is at the centerpiece of our teaching, right? And from this vocabulary and grammar, we have the vocabulary lists and we have the grammar points, you know, and they, they vocab the vocabulary more or less goes with the theme of our lessons, our units, you know, modules. And then from the vocabulary and the grammar, from that, you know, we have activities to practice the lexical grammar forms, right? That is, to, we have we have the present perfect and we want to practice the present perfect and we want to create activities so students can practice the present perfect, right? And usually the, 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 the framework that it is uh, the most popular one for the last maybe 30, 40 years, not in the US, but around the world, is the famous PPP framework. And for those of you who have, have not heard about it, is, uh, it, it is these are the, the acronyms of presentation, practice, production. So the presentation is the, the explanation of these grammar points, right? And then the, the practice, the practice is students do, you know, fill in the blanks exercises or fill in the, or, or matching, you know, something that is very controlled, you know, and allows students to practice the grammatical form of the day, right? The one that we just explained. And then the, the, the production is the same exercises, but with the purpose of the students using the language in a, or, or practice the language, yeah, using the language, I would say, in a more open way, right? But the purpose is to practice these grammar forms or this vocabulary, right? Uh, and then we have an evaluation, we have a test, right? And usually the test is filling the blanks. Sometimes it has, you know, maybe a composition, right? A, 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 writer, a, a writing piece, but the writing piece usually is with a purpose for students to show the grammatical forms that they have learned, you know, through, throughout the unit, right? So, so it is the framework, this is a very common framework in which we have been teaching, many of us, right, have been teaching and this is what we are familiar with, right? Textbooks use this, you know, to as a framework, as a method to teach languages. And we can see it. For example, I just went to um, to um, to, a, uh, to a conference uh, last month, something like that, and someone, the presenter, was saying was talking about 
uh, their class. And uh, this person said, well, I usually start my class with the, 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 the activities of the day, right? It was Spanish class. And for example, I have this. So the first thing was the Hispanic world is a topic, right? The second thing was the present tenses of, of irregular verbs. And the third thing in, in their life of this, or in, their, in this class was to be a poem. So that shows you, I mean, I am, I, I am you know, uh, adapting this from this example, but that shows us that this, this particular instructor was teaching the grammar, right? The grammar, it was, a, it was like a teaching grammar as an object, right? Of, of, of her class, of, of, of this person's class. Another thing that happened, for example, um, in social media, uh, someone uh, put something like, uh, I need to, you know, I need to, uh, teach this class on Friday, and uh, it is about the present perfect, right? So could you give them some ideas how to go about it? So the class was around the present perfect, right? So the, the, the center was the present perfect, and then give me activities that my students can do to practice the present perfect, right? Or we have also seen, I mean, this is a, this is a syllabus that I was given, uh, I, I don't know, maybe eight years ago when I was starting teaching at certain uh, institution, and it was for Spanish uh, second semester, I think, and you can see this syllabus, and you can see that every day there is a grammar point. So this is the example, the typical example of a syllabus that is based on grammar points. It's a synthetic syllabus, right? A syllabus that it is, that shows you you know, that every day we are going to cover a grammar, a grammar form, right? And this is very common. This is a very common thing to do. Okay, so the thing that happens, as you know, is that there are some problematic things, very problematic things with this framework. And one of the things is that the, the purpose of, of the, 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 the object, is actually gonna say, or oh, what is that we are trying the students to learn the language is extremely complex. Language is an extremely complex thing to be reduced, you know, for its learning to be learned one thing at a time. It's a, it would be absolutely impossible for someone to read a language when you go one structure at a time. It is, it would be, I mean, the language, it, it, because language is not only grammar, as you can see, as you know, La language is phonetics, language is pragmatics, it's semantics, it's, it's extremely comp, it's, it is, I mean, it's absolutely, it's, it's, um, it's, um, it, it's unfathomable, you know, what is that language, the nature of language, for us to try, right, to teach it one structure at a time. The only thing, the, the other thing is that we have, in, this, in the field of second language acquisition, that it is about 60 years old, we have accumulated enough evidence you know, that reveals that the, the, the acquisition phenomena is not aligned with the teaching approach that I just described, the framework that presents one structure at a time plus practice. The, the, the evidence suggests you know, that acquisition happens in developmental stages, in the stages of acquisition, that there are, that there are constraints in language production that students uh, sometimes oversupply things or undersupply things, that the students start acquiring one thing and as time passes by, they, they tend to make errors that they used not to make before. And then as time passes by, they incorporate these uh, grammatical structures or these linguistic structures, and then they don't make these errors anymore. So there are many other things that I can explain to you that shows us, you know, that the way languages are learned are not aligned with the framework of teaching uh, grammar one thing at a time or having grammar at the center of our curriculum. So the process of learning and the process of teaching for decades, maybe <laughs> for centuries, are not aligned. And that, of course, has a terrible consequence that the, lear the learners are not learning the language, right? The learners, the, the students are, instead of teaching facilitating the language process, the language learning process, the, the, teach, the teaching is maybe a hindrance, right? It's not going you know, with the process of language teaching. So that is in terms of acquisition. But the other, the other uh, um, phase of the coin is communicative ability, right? So the communicative ability, as we know, happens not by practicing anything. The communicative ability 
happens when learners are engaged in communicative experiences with the purpose of, of saying something or communicating something meaningful or and relevant for them when the students are really immersed in a communicative event not and and this communicative event is you know is communicative because they are using the language to do something with it right like we all all humans do so as this you know very brief explanation that i'm gonna uh, say is you know i this framework that we have these syllables in which we are um, having grammar points lead the curriculum is it's off with what we want to accomplish it doesn't work according to our goals or the goals of the students right which is to learn the language to use the language to communicate so if you see the also the the uh, ACFO, uh, this this uh, american organization um, can do statements right what is the students can do depending or on their level you know in the three modes of communication you can see this one for example this descriptor that is at the novice um, at the, at the um, novice level, you know, that it says, I can communicate in spontaneous spoken, written, or signed conversations on both very familiar and everyday topics using a variety of practice or memorized words, phrases, simple sentences, and questions. For the uh, intermediate um, uh, 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 interaction, uh, non interaction, um, uh, presentational mode of communication, it says, I communicate information, make presentations, and express my thoughts about familiar topics using sentences and series of connected sentences through spoken, written, or sign language. And for the advanced level in interpretation, it says, I can understand the main message and supporting details on a wide variety of familiar and general interest topics across various time frames, right? So these three things, which are the can do statements that are descriptors of what learners can do, do not say at all, at all, you know, that the student has to learn the subjunctive or the imperative or the passe composé or the prepositions, never. It is it, it's, it's never, it, it, you, you, you won't find that at all. There is no grammar structure in specific that these, you know, are telling us the students should be learned at all. It says what the students can do with the language, clearly, right? So as Van Patten said in, in his book, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, um, while we're on the topic, you know, it says very clearly, there is no council or national organization with a policy stating these are the things that need to be taught and practiced in language courses. This list simply is someone, you know, or maybe a group of people thought that, you know, saying, well, first imperative, then we're going to do the present perfect. Then this list, so if someone came with it, no, you, we, don't, we don't have to go follow this, you know. Mostly when there is no evidence at all, you know, scientific evidence that support that we need to teach this way with grammar at the center of our curriculum. We don't, we don't, I mean, and nobody's, ask, nobody's asking us to do that, right? Nobody's asking us to do that. So what I want to say is what Savignon was, was saying, Susan Savignon said in a very nice, uh, something that we can reflect on, right? It says very, very clearly, she says this, if language use, language use, is essential for the development of communicative competence, not grammar practice, grammar use, then the nature and amount of second language use in the classroom setting needs to be examined closely. Is the aim truly communication, that is the focus on negotiation of meaning, rather than on practicing grammatical forms? And that is a huge difference, an ocean of difference between using the language to communicate and practicing things practicing grammar right that is a huge thing and our goal everybody's goal in this in this webinar and our students goal is to be able to use the language to communicate that is our goal so what i want to invite you, you know what i want to invite you to consider right in your practice is to try to transition to do, do this transition between grammar points to communicative goals and in my view, right, what, what happens is that we have been doing the grammar points so much, you know, and we are so, so good at doing that, right, that may, we cannot maybe say, identify ways in which I can teach not for the learners to practice language or about the language. What can I do so I can facilitate 
the students' use of language because this is what we want, right? This is what the students want. How can I do that? How can I create things in the classroom, materials, activities, in what way? How do we teach that? How can we teach so with no grammar, right? It's, it's like, wow, how that's, that's, I would, I had never done that, right? Maybe some of you are thinking about that. So what I have found is that rather than having linguistic forms direct our teaching, first the present tense, then the present progressive, then the simple past, then the past progressive, and then the exam, rather than doing that, what has worked for me is why don't we have a target task, right? And then, you know, a target task, I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain to you what a target task is, and then have in a backwards form, right? Pedagogic tasks that lead, that prepare students for the target task. And that is, you know, a switch on our thinking and our framework, it is possible. So I'm going to explain what a target task is and what pedagogic tasks is. So why tasks, right? Well, Van Patten and many others say, well, tasks are the quintessential communicative event in contemporary language teaching. Why? Because tasks, you know, have a focus on meaning and communication. A task, when students do a task or carry out a task, they are focused on communicating something or interpreting something or interacting on expressing something that it is meaningful for them. Expressing meaning, what exactly, exactly very equivalent to what we are doing it right now. My task right now is to read a webinar, right? And I'm, I am completely focused on communication. I am not, didn't you know, wake up this morning and say, well, oh, I'm, it's going to be a great uh, opportunity to practice my English. I never said that, <laughs> never. And, I'm, and none of you maybe thought, oh, it's in English, oh, I will practice my English. No, we want, you know, we are here in this, you know, a communicative event because I want something to communicate to you and you want to maybe do something with this message that I am trying to convey. This, so this is a task, right? It's focus, you know, on meaning and communication. If we can do it in the classroom easily. The task also has a gap, like our task here, right? As has a gap, you might not know, right? What I'm gonna tell you in the next 20 minutes or what I'm gonna tell you today. Maybe you don't know, there is a gap. And I don't know, right? What is that you are going to react to? I don't know what you're going to do with this information. So there is a gap. I have some information, right? That I can give you and you might give me something at the end that I don't know, you know? And we are going to be closing the gap. So a task usually has a gap that needs to be closed. A task has a clear and defined purpose that is not linguistic, right? A task has a purpose that is not practicing the present perfect. No, this is not the purpose of a task. The task is a purpose, has a purpose to learn something, to share something, to decide on something, to select on something, right? This, there's always a purpose that goes beyond, you know, the, the linguistic thing that we are going to use, you know, to the achievement of this purpose. <clears throat> and it is contextualized, it is complex in elements that are in interplay, like all tasks, you know, real world tasks, and involves learners use of several linguistics, linguistic and non-linguistic resources, right? So we have a we have a context here right now in our one in our webinar, right? There is a context. You are language teachers, I am, a, I am a language teacher too. And we have, we are having the context of Zoom, it's a webinar, we know exactly who are the participants, what is the, what is the purpose, in what, in what, what is the genre of these webinars, right? What is that we need to, what type of language we're gonna use, we can use the chat, etc. right? And it is a, it's very complex, right? And I'm using my linguistic resources and other resources too, right? That I know to make this task be, be completed. Right, so this is a task, and this is exactly what the students are doing in the classrooms. And if the task, if the task is derived from the target task, I'm gonna to explain to you what a target task in a minute, and is designed to support students in its achievement, then we call it a pedagogic task. So a pedagogic task is an activity that we that we create in the classroom, or maybe outside the classroom, but that we create with the purpose of helping students to accomplish the target task. So if my target task is to give a webinar about communication, right? What is that I did before this 
that, su that supported me, what activities that I did that support me in the accomplishing of this task, right? So let's see what a target task is, this, the goal of my lesson. So a target task is a real world activity that learners are expected to be carried out in the target language at the end of a pedagogical sequence of modules. So we have modules, you know, so in my program, for example, we have six or seven modules. I don't remember in this, uh, this moment, right? And at the end of the lesson, at the end of this module, there is a target task, right? Something that the students have to do at the end. And this task is a task that people do in, in you know, in the world. Something that, but that, that, that thing that, that, that persons do in the world. I'm gonna give you examples, writing a biography, having, a, having an interview, writing a recipe, uh, select a bunch of, uh, of hot hotels for a reservation. Things that we do in the real world is what students do in the classroom. Also, it has, you know, the, uh, the target task is the goal that we want to accomplish at the end, right? So it is relevant to the students' lives needs and goals usually you know with the, within the tdlt framework what what we do right is we carry out a needs analysis a needs analysis is something that people that are you know designing courses um, uh, do to identify the tasks that this specific group of students will have to be doing you know at the end of this course so it works perfectly for languages for, for specific purposes, for example. So if we are teaching students to do something, they are going to be working in the health, in health context, right? So we are going to identify what are the tasks that, that nurses do usually, right? And these are the target tasks. And then we're going to create a curriculum that will allow students to carry out these target tasks that are exactly the tasks, very similar to the tasks that nurses do in the hospitals, for example. In my case, in my program, the students, you know, obviously, because it's a basic language program, they don't know what the majors are, et cetera. So my, my, the program, the goals of the program is to, to achieve communicative proficiency, right? Language proficiency. So, but even though the tasks that we have are tasks that the students are interested in, right? Maybe interested, maybe useful for them when they, when they um, finish, um, their their language requirement is gonna be relevant to their lives, right? And it what drives the content and learning experiences in the classroom. What is the language? What is the linguistic resources that this task requires for students to learn in order to complete the task? But the linguistic resources and the knowledge, you know, are in are dependent on the task, right? Not the other way around, right? So what is that we that the students can use you know what are the things that the students linguistic things that the students need to learn in order to complete the task the linguistic content is driven by the nature of the task and it is evaluated how are you evaluate against criteria we have a rubric and then you know based on the nature of the task we decide well we are going to see how how it what's the evidence that the task has been completed and it has a characteristic of a task. So it is evaluated against task completion, right? So was the task done or not? Usually I put the analogy of, of, the, of the cake, right? So the task is to bake a cake, right? Well, was the cake baked or not? Was it still a cake? Or is it still a banana bread or a soup, right? We, if the purpose is to bake a cake, we want to evaluate on the bake being and the, on the, you know, the, the um, uh, birthday cake, right, being baked, right? That is how we're going to evaluate this task completion. Okay, so the pedagogic task, as I said, are the things, you know, derived from the target task and that prepare students to carry out the target task and are deliberately designed to foster language learning. These are the things that are going to help us learn language and learn the nature of the task because students sometimes do not know how to do these tasks. They have never maybe written a recipe in their lives, right? So they need to know what a recipe looks like, right? They need to be you know, familiarized with the genre in order for them to, to accomplish them. Okay, so as Elisa Shintani says, you know, a task, that's why I like them, you know, a task results in language use, exactly what we want students to do, right? Where learners treat the language 
as a tool, not as a goal, as a tool for achieving a communicative outcome rather than as an object to be studied, analyzed, and displayed. So it's a completely change of the game, right? A task is really a communicative thing that students are going to do. If we really say, in my opinion, that we are teaching communicatively, then students have to do tasks, right? Because tasks are a the quintessential you know, communicative event as one patent said. Okay, so I would like to stop here for a second and I'm going to give you some examples of target tasks that I that I that we do in our program at the University of Illinois Chicago with my students you know it's a, it's a task based program and students carry out tasks that the task brief our curriculum drive our, our, our curriculum so I'm going to give some examples of tasks in general some of them are from my program others are not for example to give an elevator pitch about a project of our community, that would be a fantastic task to do, but this requires you know, a lot of fluency and it requires an advanced level of the language. So I, my students do, know that, do not do that, but it would be a very nice to do for advanced students, right? To prepare them to give an evaluate, uh, an, evaluate, an um, elevator pitch, that would be fantastic, right? People do that in their real life, right? It's very useful. Um, my students in 102 in the second semester, uh, this semester, they gave a presentation of, of their ideal neighborhood, a fantastic task, you know, how, how do you present, how do you create what is an, an ideal neighborhood, what does an ideal neighborhood has looks like, you know, give a presentation, tell us what your ideal neighborhood is. Select best hotels saved on several reviews, right, based on several reviews, so read several reviews, so this is an input-based task, the task can be input-based or production-based, doesn't have to be production-based necessarily all the time. To create a poster with information on our favorite person is something that the students do in Spanish 101 first semester, and it's a fantastic task, they love it, they they, they introduce someone from their family usually and then describe this person and the students have to decide who would like to meet, right? That is a fantastic task. To conduct an interview of a classmate to get to write the biography, I'm gonna show you exactly in a, in, a, in a few minutes how my students did this task, that's fantastic. To interview someone is something that we do in the real life and to write biographies is something that humans do. That is a, a real world task. To write a recipe of our favorite dish, that's a real world task too. My students did it two, two weeks ago. To organize a weekend for a group of tourists, that's a thing, you know, that's a target task that we can do. And to design or, and present an object to solve a, a daily life problem, something that students in the fourth semester of Spanish do, a fantastic task too. So these are tasks that you can do in the, these are target tasks. This is going to lead your curriculum, it's going to read your content, right? And it's going to uh, prepare students uh, for the, for, you know, to use the language for, you know, our things outside the classroom. So, um, the, for example, the unit that I, that I taught uh, this semester um, uh, was one of the target tasks that we did in Spanish 102 was to write a recipe for me, for my instructor, right? It was a kind of simple target task. Target task can be, could be very complex. But this target task was for a student to write a recipe, right? You have to write a recipe. You have, I, I, I will, I, I had to show them, you know, to teach them how to write recipes in Spanish and what can we do? So I want to ask you, the audience, if you had, if I told you, you know, to, you know so tomorrow in your, in your French class, in your Turkish class, in your Chinese class, if you had two weeks to teach your students to write a recipe, what is that you would teach? What is that? What? How you would? How you would you go about it? What is that students need to learn in terms of not only linguistic things but also content things for them to be able to write a recipe in the next two weeks? What would you do? Imperative says Swain. Okay, lexicon from cooking terms exactly. Uh, format of recipe text type exactly. Yes, vocabulary and foods. Yeah. Time sequence in transition, like first, second, you know, then, okay. Uh, food, yeah, vocabulary and food, exactly. Fantastic, exactly. So you see how this task is defining, right, the communicative, the communicative events, the communicative, uh, the, uh, the linguistic uh, resources, right? Measurements, exactly, how to read measurements, reading recipes, right? 
measurements. <laughs> yeah, it's very important for sure. Exactly. So you can see right away, right, that cultural elements, where it came from, what it means to them. Okay, well, it could be. It's, it's a, it's, I would say that is a tang tang tangential uh, part of the recipe, right? Because you know, it's 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 important. Fantastic. So you see how the target task already. Uh, is is designing is 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 uh, driving you know the type of things that uh, you are going to be teaching the students need to know. Okay, so someone said imperatives, fantastic. Yeah, uh, usually uh, uh, recipes have in, have imperative for sure, but remember that tasks also have to be adjusted to the level of the student, right? And imperatives is extremely in Spanish at least an extremely difficult thing to learn. Um, or to, I mean, to acquire in sense, you know, to, to incorporate in the linguistic system. So there are other linguistic resources other than the imperative, right? That we can use uh, for recipes. Not all the recipes use imperatives. So we can, you know, we can say what what are the linguistic the 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 fan of linguistic resources that the students can, you know, be exposed to or can choose, you know, to use for this recipe. Okay, infinity verbs, exactly. Tomar, comer, okay, perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the, a few pedagogic tasks that I did that prepare my students to do this recipe. So the first thing that I did, or one of the first thing was to categorize food items based on the meals to eat them. So you can see that it is a pedagogic task. And if I say, if I say that it's a task, this in itself has a purpose, it has a meaning, right? And the purpose is not linguistic. I don't, I don't want my students to practice anything. I want my students to categorize the food items so I know and everybody knows what type of food they usually eat in breakfast, at breakfast, or at dinner, or at lunch, right? And we learned in this type of, in this task, that some of my students were vegetarian, who didn't like that, nobody ate eggs, you know, things like that. So the purpose of this pedagogic task was not to practice anything. The purpose was to compare our the types of food that we eat usually at several times of the day and to learn something about ourselves, right? When we finish this activity, I have learned something about my professor and about my colleague or about my classmate that I didn't know before. So there was a gap there, right? So in itself, this pedagogic task helped students to accomplish the target task but also it was a task in itself. So it has all the particularities, the characteristics of tasks. Other things that we did was to listen to several dish descriptions from different parts actually of the world. Someone said something, put something about cultural. I think it was Ecuador, Cuba, I don't know what other, it was three or four, it was four or three, three or four uh, yeah, uh, recipes. And they had to, to, to listen to the description and identify the ingredients so they can say, for example, if they would try it based on the ingredients, oh, I don't, because I don't, I don't eat beans. So people say, no, no, I, I very nice recipe, but I hate beans, so I'm not gonna try it. So again, I learned from my students what types of foods they like. So this was a pedagogic task that has in itself a meaning and a purpose. We also read uh, the mode preparation of several recipes, right? And we evaluate the level of difficulty. Would you cook this recipe? Is it too difficult? Is it simple? What makes simple versus difficult recipes? We also listen to the mode preparation of someone, and this person was saying that this that had several secrets or one secret and how to make this dish. And my students had to had to had to to identify it right and say if it was really a secret or if they didn't know already how to how to make that right. And other things that to do an activity gap to complete a list of ingredients. So it was, it's a, a typical activity in, in task-based language teaching where students have to do information gap. And then the purpose is to use the language to complete, right, the list of ingredients for the, for the, for the recipe. So we did many more because we, we spent like five class sessions, but I'm telling you what is that in the ways in which I prepare my students to write this recipe. And this was the task. A very very common task at the end, you know, of these five sessions on, on a Friday. Not usually it doesn't have to be Friday, but it was Friday this time. We I asked my students please select one of these dishes, right, 
as an example, write the recipe, including 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 the 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 ingredients and the measurements, as you very well told me, right? And then tell me how you prepare it, right? And then you give it to me. It is for me. I am the audience of your recipe, right? And I might not know many things. I might not. I might not be an expert cook. You know, I know some. I said I know how to cook several things, but don't assume that I know. You know how to cook. So you have to be a little bit. You know, uh, detailed in the mode of preparation. So this was a sandwich, a piece of pasta, or a salad. And I told them, you don't have to do exactly with with beets. You know, or anything. Just give me a salad that you know how to make, or a pasta dish, or a sandwich. You know, it doesn't have to be with ham. Maybe if you are vegetarian, do the sandwich with the things that you usually put in your sandwiches. Okay. So this is what they were asked to do. That was the final task. And this is one of my students' uh, work. So you can see, for those of you who don't know Spanish, she chose the pasta dish, right? She gave me all the ingredients with the measurements. She even went ahead and put some of the things that you need, right? The, the, the uh, a, a pan, you know, and a pot and, uh, and a pork, you know, things like that. That usually you don't put that in recipes, but she wanted to excel. And then the mode of preparation, which was absolutely fantastic. First, as someone put, as someone said here, first you clean or you wash the tomatoes and the basil in water. After, you know, you have to put put out uh, water, you know, in a very big pan, etc. So you can see that she used several linguistic resources. We didn't use the imperative because imperative was very, it's, it's a little bit higher in their level, but I told them, se lavan, I told them, hay que echar agua. Not that I told them, it's just that this is a, the vocabulary and the expressions that came in the many recipes that we read. And she, you know, incorporate that, you know, to their work. And uh, as you can see, the task was completed because you know it continued in the other part of the, of, of the sheet. So for me, this is task completion. For me, say well, you know, if, a, if I follow the recipe, most likely I want, I'm going to be successful in doing my pasta. She did a great job. So I did not want the students to practice anything. <laughs> I just provide the linguistic resources that they might need to do this, and she did. Accord, and many of my students as well did this task. To completion, the, the, the task was completed successfully, right? Okay, fantastic. So another another example, the second and last example that I can give you that I want to to, to give it today is something that happened at the beginning, towards the beginning of the semester, which was to interview a classmate and to write the biography of the classmate based on the interview. So what would you do if I said to you, hey, you have Second semester students in uh, uh, novice, novice mid, week mid, right? Um, and you have to, uh, you know, teach them how to do an interview to know about the life and the likes and the hobbies and the dreams and everything, what that the students are doing, because you are going to write your classmates' biography. I'm going to ask, I'm going to answer your question, Alexandra, at the end. It's a very good question. So what would you do? What do students need to learn in order to write someone's biography? The task was, in, imagine that it is the, the year 2045 or something, and you are writing this year your classmates' biography. And I said, don't put, no, nobody, nobody is gonna die, right? So <laughs> don't say that he died, right? Okay, ask questions, exactly. Ask questions regarding the life, right? What, what kind of question do you think is, is super necessary, essential to write a um, uh, biography? Okay, where are you from? Yes, exactly. But there is another one. Biographies, all the biographies have this information. What is something that they need to know for sure? Otherwise, it, was, it might not look as like a biography. Name, okay, fantastic. Um, they, are, if they are old enough, okay, okay. Dates, dates for what? But what is okay, past tense, okay, right? Okay, so born, exactly. When was the person born? Exactly. So if you in Chinese or in German or in Italian, you need to know how, you need to teach students how to say this person was born, right? Was born is a 
a, a linguistic resource that you, so it's not all the, the past tense. No, I'm not gonna teach the, I mean, just the past tense are necessary for the biography. That's it. So in Spanish, we say nació. And nació is, a, a, this person was born. So this, this verb, I thought that verb as a chunk, right? Because it was essential for the task, right? All the biographers say, Rand Kastner was born on, and dates, right? But not all the dates in the world. <laughs> Only you need to you need to understand, right? Dates around 2000, 1992, because these are around the dates of what that my students were born, right? And you have to be able to express the year that you were born. That's it. Not all the years, not all the months, right? Just the years that are necessary for the task, because the content, the linguistic content is designed, right, the, according to the task. So what I did exactly, months, years, okay, so what I did was several pedagogic tasks to prepare my students. One of them was to draw their timeline, you know, and compare it with the rest of the, of the class to see they So they would say, well, I was born in this day, then I went to school, then, so they would write, you know, their draw, they, they draw their, their, their time life, you know, and they would compare with the student and they would tell me if they had differences or similarities. Another thing that we did was to share what extraordinary things they want to do because the biography would continue since the task was that we are going to, we are writing the biography in the year 2045 or something, I don't remember, it was in the future, right? So you have to tell me what is that, what you think based on your classmates' answers to your questions, what do you think would be the future, right? Are they going to get married? Are they going to be legal married? Did they, did they you know, uh, achieve their dreams? You know, what are the things that people do? I graduated, you know, I wrote, I wrote a, a novel, right? Things that people, extraordinary things that people do in their lives. Also, we read about the experiences of people, you know, and we select the experiences that have been the coolest, right? Um, uh, oh, that according to our opinions. We read someone's CV, you know, and order the events, you know, of the CV and decide if this CV was typical or not, you know, for according to pe people in their culture, right? <clears throat> Another thing that we did was to listen to a story and the students had to write the end. So, and we did the other things too. And these things prepare my students to do the biography. So I am going to, uh, I don't know what time is it? We have, yeah, we have time. So I want, I'm gonna show you the part of the, of the conversation that my students had, the interview that two of my students had. It's Spanish 102 is the first, month, right? It was in, at the end of September. <clears throat> so bear with me. There are some pauses, you know, there are no, novice, novice mid, kind of mid students. Um, but you are, I want to show you how my, what my students were doing to use the language in a communicative event. My purpose was not to practice anything. My purpose was you need to get enough information from your classmate so you are able to write her biography. That is what you need. So as it happens with all the, when we are going to interview a person, we prepare the, the questions, right? We prepare the questions in, in advance, right? Because, you know, otherwise it would be a little bit difficult to, uh, to do just do it on, you know, on the spot. And then, you know, based on the answers of the people that you are interviewing, you are going to <coughs> simply, you know, uh, the follow-up questions or something. So the student had to do follow-up questions if necessary or negotiate the meaning if something was not clear, right? So this in Spanish, but I want you, those of you who don't, don't know Spanish, just pay attention and see how spontaneously and the, what my students did, right? For this communicative, authentic, genuine event. And um, so you are gonna see that the questions are pretty accurate because we, I, I, they, they, gave me, they, they gave me the questions and I wrote them in the blackboard in a, an accurate way. So my students do not ask these questions in that, in, with that level of accuracy, but she, but please pay attention to the answers, okay? So let's see if it works. Sí. Uh, hola, Ali. ¿Cuándo naciste? Nací en 2001, 2001, en Romeoville, Illinois. Uh, muy bien. Uh, ¿Cuándo terminaste la preparatoria? Uh, 
me graduarme en 2020. Yeah, 2020. ¿Tienes familia? Sí, dos hermanas y mis padres y tu madre. Uh, ¿Qué te gusta hacer? Me gusta leer. Uh, ¿Qué carrera estudias? Uh, y psicología, estudio psicología y criminología. Uh, ¿Trabajas? Sí, trabajo en uh, Hofus. Uh, ¿Qué es uh, llamada de... Uh, um, es tu trabajo, llama. Sí. El Whole Foods es la llama. Sí. A, uh, ¿A qué escuela fuiste? Sí, la escuela. ¿Quieres casarte? Sí. ¿Qué es lo que te gusta hacer? Me gusta leer. ¿Quieres viajar? Sí. ¿Sí? ¿Dónde? Paris. Viajé en Paris y London. ¿Y.? Repita, por favor. Paris y... London. London. Sí. Uh, ¿Quieres tener hijos? Sí, dos hijos. ¿Cuál es tu sueño? Mi sueño es trabajar en el FBI. Uh, muy interesante. Adios, gracias. Adios, gracias. Okay, so that was the job of my students, and uh, that, that was the preliminary job. So what I what what I would like to show you is, of course, it's a very basic Spanish and it's a few phrase a few phrases. But what is very interesting here is that they were really engaged in a communicative event, right? That they were really trying to get their message across, that they are really, that there was a purpose, you know, both of them were, in, were, were invested in this project because there needed to be something to do with this, with this information if, after that, right? So it's exactly what, in my opinion, what we want students to do. We want students to use the language. I didn't, I don't want, I did, I, I'm gonna repeat it. I didn't want to practice, to respond to practice anything. I didn't have any, any, any agenda of verbs or grammar or anything. I just gave lots of chunks, lots of lots of resources. You know, we read lots of biographies. We uh, we asked questions, and they were able to use them. Right? They were able to use them to their needs, to their purposes, to their ability. And you know, you can see, see here. I'm gonna uh, stop here for a see. second. You can see here one of the biographies. So, so this is the biography of Hugo, one is the outcome, right? And as I said, it's 30th of September, 2043, right? And it was Julian who wrote it. And it says, Hugo was born in, 20, in 2002 in a city in, in Nigeria. He finished uh, high school in 2021 20, at UIC and in UIC in 2025, right? Hugo likes art and history. And now he's a famous artist. His art is in the Museum of Louvre in France. And Hugo has two kids, one boy and one girl, and has a beautiful wife. This is all made up based, I guess, on the answers that Hugo gave, you know. And Hugo is very happy and he is very successful. So this is a biography. This is a biography at the level of the student, right? It looks like a, like a biography, it has a characteristic of a, of a biography, is complete, is It is, uh, it is um, uh, informational, it's organized, right? And it looks like a biography. Is it a biography? Yes, it's a biography, right? So task completion. So what I want you to show um, at, uh, here is the reflection of a student that I read in the, on Saturday, and he says something that I'm very proud of, and I want to show you as an evidence that this is a kind of maybe 
or framework that we want to use in our classes. He says, the most important thing for me is to learn Spanish in such a way that I can be a good conversational speaker. Everybody, at least 99% of my students in my program want to play their Spanish so they can use it for communication. From what I've seen since I started learning Spanish in high school, there is a big difference between the proper Spanish and what often actually is spoken, right? It wasn't until this year in Spanish 102 that I've started to learn more of conversational Spanish, right? Using Spanish to converse and to the cultural sides of Spanish. So what I interpret from here is that at the, at, at the you know, be, previously the Spanish was not, was not, didn't ring a bell for him because he wanted to use the Spanish to come to have conversations, right? And maybe here with this framework of doing tasks and we are focused on using the language, the, the student says, well, I think this is the way that I want to learn, right? I want to learn because I want to, I'm, I'm feeling that I'm using the language genuinely and not to practice anything. So what I want is to invite you to consider, you know, that this framework that we have been working with for the longest time, to make it a little bit disappear from our minds and have something that has a target task as something that is real world, something that is achievable, measurable, that we can evaluate, and then have an evaluation criteria on the nature of the task, how we're going to evaluate this task, you know, what is, for me, was it a complete cake or not? What is a cake and how can I you know, evaluate the completion of the cake? And then have pedagogic tasks that support students in their accomplishment of something that much, very likely, maybe are going to be using beyond the classroom, right? Something that gives them confidence, something that it is with the whole purpose of using the language as we all do to communicate something and not to practice something. So I wanna finish with this fantastic quotation from the, fan, the fantastic uh, uh, Chris Van den Branden that says, are language courses about language or about life, about the rules that govern a language system in, and the linguistic errors people make when they do not know them, or about the use of language to discuss meaningful content, to perform meaningful tasks and pursue life worthy goals and develop our students' identities. So I really want to say thank you for your attention. Uh, and uh, I guess that I am open for any questions that you may have. Thank you. Of course. Well, first, Dr. Dr. Fernandez, thank you so much. You, we, you. we are the ones who should be thanking you for this lovely presentation. Uh, I, I think I speak for everyone. I say phenomenal. Thank so you. informative. Thank really, you. really helpful for everyone. Uh, hopefully you have some time because we have a bucket load of questions. Oh my God! Okay, uh, to, 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 to answer, uh, okay. I will okay. start. I will start with some of the earlier ones. There was um, a couple of people who addressed that in certain contexts. There are teachers who do have to apparently show and prove that they teach certain grammar points. I'm reading directly from the question. Um, they teach certain grammar points in order to fulfill a contractual obligation between universities. Um, in order to have courses accepted, thus we need to write that we teach those grammar topics. While I support this way of presenting material, um, not everybody can adopt to it. And just, I think it's really just the fact that I think, um, I guess the types of flexibility that instructors have with what they can teach and whether it's rigid or whether they're a little bit more able to do um, tasks. So just how would you address that in, in response to that? Yeah, I see what you say, unfortunately. Yes, that you, that you are required to teach certain things, right? So I want to, I would like, to see, right? Um, I, if I were you, I mean, I, I, of course, it's something, something that I, uh, I've been thinking for a long time how to do that. But if um, I would say that, um, try to try to make uh, try to come up with tasks, real world tasks, right? That is students can, that are looking can derive from the activities of the class. So the, the, the usually textbooks, you know, if you have a textbook or you have, I guess you have your a curriculum that you have to follow and they have themes, right? So we can see what we, we want with this, within these themes, what type of real world tasks my students can do. And then, you know, you can identify based, you know, on the linguistic resources that you have to teach. So if you have to teach the present perfect, say, well, you know, I don't, I do not want, you know, to, to, to design a task based on this grammar thing, you know, but what is that, that, that what can, what task, you know, can I, can I do, you know, can I, can, can students do, you know, in which maybe we can incorporate these linguistic resources that I, that I would say also, you know, you can, um, you can maybe 
teach, you know, the present perfect or whatever it is that you need to teach, but, at, but also give some time for students to do smaller, you know, tasks that help them to use the language authentically and, you know, without really a, an, an objective of practice any form, right? So maybe have like a parallel curriculum if that is possible, right? That is possible. No, I mean, people People really want students to communicate, right? So so that is, so so, so you can say, well, I'm, I am doing this task, this little task, simple task, but also I am also teaching a little bit about these other linguistic, you know, grammar points. There was another, there was another question. I think it was asked twice, Claudia. It says, and, and I know you have addressed this before in previous, um, previous webinars with us, but one can bake a cake and have a horrible result, right? The cake was made, but it was not edible or presentable. So full credit, right? What's the, what's the rubric and, and how are they? Yes, exactly. And, uh, and I wish I had time for rubrics. I right. thought, I mean, you cannot, you cannot teach tasks without rubrics. You know, they go, they go hand in my hand. There is a, a, a webinar that I did over the summer with Extempore that I'm sure it's available at least for those who register, but I'm sure if you, know, if you ask for permission, maybe you can, uh, uh, you can watch it about you know, a formative assessment and summative assessment with tasks. So yes, you need to have a rubric. You need to know the nature of the task what is the nature of that? What is what? Is, what does a bake a birthday cake look like, right? In order to evaluate if the birthday cake was, you know, is a is a is a cake or not. So yeah, sometimes you know the tasks are not they are not um, they are done beyond expectations, right? So you have a rubric and say, well, what is not a biography? What is that? What does a biography has to have in order to be a biography? What does a birthday cake has to be like, right? Because it could be horrible. Well, you know, you didn't you didn't accomplish a task, right? And that can happen, right? And that happens to my students too. You know that well, the task was not completed. You didn't write a biography. You wrote something else, right? It's gonna be a biography. So there are essential things that you need to identify that are going to make the task what you want, the task that you want, right? That respects the intention. Thank you, Claudia. Uh, a couple, couple more. Uh, can you please share the proficiency proficiency levels in your classes after semester one, two, three, and four in your program? What is expected? Yeah, that's a, that is something that I wish I had, you know, and that, that I am uh, asking for money twice, and it was, you know, then I need to continue. Uh, right, I want my students, I want my program, I want to see what is the proficiency of my students at the end of the fourth semester. My goal, theoretically speaking, based there is a an actual document. They're fantastic that it is, I think it's called the OPI uh, in the in the in the job in the workforce, right? And it says what is the proficiency level of students after uh, two semesters of Spanish in, the, in high school after one after one year, after two years, you know. So according to this instrument that ACTL has, and you can find it in ACTL, and according to other uh, studies that have been in the flagship uh, project with the University of Michigan and Minnesota, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, another university that have done many recent um, uh, uh, proficiency exams. After two years of language learning at university, the students usually have an intermediate low level, right? In listening, is novice high. So intermediate low level, it's uh, is and it, it and it goes hand in hand with the OPI, um, you know, uh, uh, and the OPI document that Actor has. So it's intermediate. I want intermediate mid, but I'm not sure if I am if I am my students are achieving that level. To tell you the truth. <clears throat> Awesome, thank you. Okay, well, I actually really like this question. I thought it was interesting. Can you suggest studies or articles that compare the proficiency levels of students in traditional classes versus task-based classes? Yeah, there are several of them. Yes, um, they, yeah, and I can. I don't have them from the top of my mind, but I can give you know I can give Grant the the uh, the the information that yeah there are there are there is a very it's a very, very well researched pedagogy uh, task-based language teaching. And um, and yeah, there are there are several studies that have compared the proficiency levels of PPP, for example, and task based. Yeah, and I am I am I'm sure I can give it to Grant. Of course, yeah, I'd be happy to share. Okay, and then another one from Callie. So with pedagogical tasks, all grammar and vocab is basically presented in context exactly. with, with practice and use that will lead to the final task. 
Exactly, exactly, exactly. They, they, because you know, you cannot, as as my friend Florencia Kinshaw says, you cannot you cannot divorce meaning from form, right? The, if you if you are in, in with the, if you are be, if you are focused on the meaning, the form comes along, right? You cannot escape the form, right? So, but the focus is not the form, is the meaning. So yes, when the students were reading the recipes, they read, es necesario, hay que uh, tomar, sacar, se lavan, se, and all of these things, you know, they were there because it's normal that, that, this, that these things were there, right? So yeah, I was, teach, I was, I was, the students were exposed to all these linguistic resources for, and, you know, and then they were making, you know, the connection with it and they were learning it. Yeah, exactly. And I told them, you know, nació, what does nació mean? This person was born. Well, this is a very important verb to have, right? Not all the past tense, it's just nació, because nació is really a keyword for biographies, right? So yes, the thing is that my purpose was not to teach them all the imperatives. My goal, I wanted to teach them the past tense. This is my goal. My goal was to write a biography. That was my goal. Awesome. Thank you. Dr. Fernandez. Uh, another one, just a comment. I, perhaps you can speak to this. I know you've written books before. Um, not a question, just a comment. We need books of tasks and rubrics rather than traditional textbooks. Maybe yeah. your project. Exactly, but say it aloud. I don't know. I don't know. But say that aloud because in my 20 years that I have teaching a second language, teaching Spanish, you know, whenever I ask the publishers, can I have that such book? The answer is we don't have these books because teachers do not want them. Is exactly. I mean, I'm sure you have had the same experience in your program. So if we want these, we should tell them, you know, I need books that help me with the communicative goals of my students and my and my goals. Mm -hmm. And I hope, but let's see if we have, if, if, if we are heard. Mm -hmm. I, I write have, a book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have one. I, I can relate to this too. I think this would be um, an interesting one. So task-based language teaching is fantastic, but time consuming. Can you suggest any resources or a textbook perhaps that someone could use and maybe modify? My load is four, four. Maybe that means four different preps is what I'm assuming. Um, so it's very hard to build everything from scratch. What tips? Oh yeah, totally. I, I, I hear you. Yes, it's very hard to build. I, I, I agree with you and you need some skill, you know, and not always we have all these skills. And yeah, that's, that's, that's for sure. And, uh, and I know that teachers and me and myself, you know, are very busy and that's for sure, yes. However, uh, there are some resources. There is a book that I don't have it at hand, but I can, it is a book that is called, um, uh, it's called, I guess, Task-Based Language, it's called Task in the Language Classroom. It is for ESL students, for students for, uh, for a second language, right? And you are going to find lots of tasks, they're ready-made. It's like, like almost like a worksheet, you know, ready-made. And it is, uh, I got, if I were in my office, I can, you know, grab it and show it to you, but I can give the name, please remain, remain remind me, uh, uh, Grant, to give yes. that name of the, I was going to put it here and I forgot to do it. So there are a few, and then there are other textbooks um, that I may recommend, but I don't want to recommend right now because it's not, I don't want to make, you know, a promotional thing of books here. But if you send me an email, I can, you know, uh, give you some other ideas on how or books, textbooks that lend themselves more or less, you know, so you can just tweak them and, you know, do them as do them task based. It's possible. There are a few of them, not many, but a few of them. Thank you. So one more, I, I believe. Um, Someone, someone said, I want to challenge a few conceptions about tasks. To choose tasks for a particular course level, you think about what is level appropriate, of course. These notions come from the very Latin grammars on which many scope and sequences are based in the first place. My point is that our notions of grammar and complexity, complexity are still present in the selection of tasks. And then the purpose of tasks continues to be challenging. The purpose is to write a recipe for your teacher. Well, how about writing a recipe for a classmate who then has to carry it out and bring the result to class for tasting? or a recipe for posting online for others. LSP, I'm not sure what LSP is. LSP classes can address this more seamlessly, but real purposes continues to be a challenge in mind. Writing a recipe for the teacher is still not an authentic, is still not authentic task and does indeed carry the purpose of practicing language, even if not specific grammar points, if you can respond to that, Claudia. Okay, yeah, so uh, that was the task, don't, I mean, I, I, so there are many things here that that, that this person that this uh, this person was saying. Yes, I guess that um, the task was not authentic in the sense 
that um, is maybe not common that is that someone is writing a recipe for the teacher right like maybe it's not that common called that common thing right you usually do not do that uh, and it is true my point is that what the student was doing right uh, was authentic in the sense that if he or she or this person wanted to do something equivalent in the world beyond the classroom, that person was going to be able to do it, right? Because the the the, the exercise of doing it, you know, was authentic, right? People write recipes, and he, this person wrote a recipe, right, uh, in a, an authentic way. So even though the task was not, you know, um, um, setting the task setting was not maybe. Uh, authentic because people do not write recipes to their teachers, the person was going to be shown or show that this, this, if this person had to write a recipe outside of the world of the, of the classroom, he can do it. And I, my, and the purpose was at all to practice anything. The purpose was to use the language to do something with it, right? And this is very different. That is a totally different change in scope. So yeah, and they are, uh, of course, the, the task can be very, very, com very uh, complex, right? Very complex, and and to the point that it be beyond, it become projects, right? A, a project that has several, several days, you know, several hours of preparation. That is another thing. But that is something that is more doable, and it could be. Uh, yeah, tasks are supposed to be complex. Yes, yeah. What I think. What advice would you give for bringing that into the classroom, Dr. Fernandez? To, to bring what? To bring the task into the classroom, we say so. You say write a biography or write a write a recipe. Like bring it, you know, have them actually do it if the, if they can. Like oh not. yeah, well that that is that. I see what you say, Joe. So, so maybe sure. that would be fantastic to come up with a recipe, right? Cook the thing, you know, and bring it to the classroom. That would be yeah. That that's that. If you want to do that, if you can do that, yeah, fantastic. Or have I mean, or, or maybe our students do not write much nowadays. Maybe they can do a TikTok video. Right mm -hmm. of the of them, you know, doing the task, you know, showing, you know, with our video showing the task as people do, you know, in TV TV shows, etc. Yes, of course. So these 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 are fantastic things that we can do. Of course, yeah, yeah. Three more. Oh boy. Okay. Um, <laughs> did your students have models of biographies before writing? Models of biographies? Yes, many, many more. Like they they read a lot. Yeah, they read they, no, but well, maybe not a lot, but they read a few biographies. Yeah, before. Uh, before doing that, yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, you need, I mean, if you want, as I said with the cake, you know, if, if you, if the, if the purpose is to bake a cake, students need to look what their, their the cake is like, right? They need to have the model, yeah, for sure. Awesome. I think, Claudia, I think that's everything. I really do. <laughs> lots, lots of questions. If you have any more, please. Fantastic. Is there anything else? Yeah, Dr. exactly. Yeah. Is yeah. So patient with us answering all of the questions. No, it's my pleasure. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I am very happy. It that has way. worked for me. I'm happy to share, right? Yeah, of course. Of course. If that's, if that's all, well, we thank, we thank you, Claudia, again. Yes, of course. Yeah. The recording will be sent out. Yeah, okay. The recording of this, of the webinar will be sent out tomorrow, um, probably sometime in the morning. Keep your eyes on your email and you will receive it. Uh, and I will also be sure to make sure that I talk to Claudia herself to get some sources and articles to share uh, in that follow-up mm -hmm. as well for those who are interested. Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much for, for sharing your time in the, this evening for us. And, uh, and if you have any questions, you have my email there, and I will be very happy to answer any questions you have. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you, Claudia. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye-bye, Janice. I, show me your question, okay? Because she was said that she's a, a point that, that show me the question know, and I, I will. Don't know if we okay. Saw. Okay. See ya. In the chat. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>